I'm Dr. Jamie Rutland. I'm a pulmonary critical care and internal medicine physician in Southern California. And I'm Dr. Alok Patel, board certified pediatrician and general loudmouth. And we are honored to be sitting here today on Dr. Saying Stuff, our channel partners with YouTube Health, answering all the questions that you all have and that you all Google. Today, we're chatting about endometriosis, something that neither one of us know much about. So quickly framing what we're talking about, endometriosis is a condition when the tissue that lines your uterus grows somewhere else in your body. And when that happens, it can become inflamed. You can have all sorts of complications and symptoms and it really does decrease quality of life for a lot of people out there. And that's a lot of people, millions of people around the globe suffer from endometriosis. In fact, one in 10 people assigned female at birth will develop endometriosis during their reproductive years. And diagnosis is not exactly black and white. There's a need for more awareness, more education, and more healthcare professionals to actually know the questions to ask and know when to refer people to a specialist, such as the one we're gonna to talk to today, for further workup. Yeah, there isn't necessarily a clear cause or cure for this condition. So I think it's really important that the public knows about this condition and goes to seek out experts like one we're gonna to talk to in just a few moments. Dr. Karen Tang, a board certified gynecologist and a nationally renowned expert at minimally invasive gynecologic surgery and women's health. Dr. Tang, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. Thank you so much for having me on here. I love talking about endometriosis and it definitely is not talked about enough. So Dr. Tang, we're gonna run through the top seven questions about endometriosis, the top seven things that everyone out there should know. I always think that the first question should be, what exactly is endometriosis? Endometriosis is a chronic medical condition where tissue that looks a lot like the tissue that normally grows inside of the uterus called endometrial tissue grows outside of the uterus and causes lots of inflammation. It's a really inflammatory condition. It can cause lots of pain and other terrible symptoms. Question two, how does endometriosis usually present in people? We've read that symptoms are all over the place, but what are the most common symptoms that you see? So the most common symptoms are pain with periods, pain with sex, but also because endometriosis typically grows near the bowel and the rectum can also cause a lot of bowel issues. In fact, a lot of people actually will present maybe to their primary care doctor or a GI doctor before they even see a gynecologist. They can have constipation, diarrhea, pain with bowel movements, or even blood in the stool. And typically pain will be worse with your periods or with ovulation. Um, people can also have inflammation and symptoms of their bladder, um, also uh, issues with uh, infertility because the endometriosis can inflame the tubes, the ovaries, it can affect egg quality. Um, it can also cause a lot of just random systemic symptoms like fatigue, migraines, um, things that you wouldn't typically think of as a gynecologic problem. Dr. Tang, who is most likely to be affected? Like what type of patient do you most often see? Do they have certain clinical characteristics? or like risk factors, family history, does that all play a part also? Endometriosis affects a lot of people, up to 10% of those who are assigned female at birth. And there are uh, people of all races, ethnicities who are affected by it. It does tend to have a higher risk if you have a family history of it, meaning that if a relative of yours, your mom, your sister um, has endometriosis, you have a higher chance of having it. Also, if you had an earlier age at which your period started, what we call the age of menarche. Um, but in general, pretty much anyone can be affected, including transgender men. Actually, even if you are on testosterone, you are not having periods anymore, people can still have endometriosis. Um, people can have endometriosis before they hit puberty or after menopause. So in general, it affects people who are reproductive age, but it can affect almost anyone. And question four, what is the gold standard for a diagnosis? As Jamie and I discussed, neither one of us would be able to diagnose someone with endometriosis. So how do you diagnose someone? And what are the questions you ask to know when to properly test someone or image someone or whatever you do 
to determine if they have endometriosis. It can take a very long time for someone to get diagnosed with endometriosis. In fact, on average, it takes seven years from the time someone starts having symptoms to the time they're diagnosed. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that endometriosis is diagnosed with surgery. It actually doesn't tend to show up on imaging studies or even on exam. Uh, so a lot of times people having all this pain will go to an emergency room, they'll get an ultrasound, a CAT scan, and they will look perfectly normal. There's not sort of an easy way to diagnose it with lab tests or ultrasounds. So a lot of times people will be like, oh, everything looks normal. Um, so time passes. The way that it's diagnosed is because we can't see it on imaging, we actually have to see it with our eyes in the body. And we do that with laparoscopic surgery. That's where we put small incisions in the abdomen. We fill the abdomen with gas we can see, and we put a camera in and we look all around the entire abdomen and pelvis. And anything that looks like endometriosis, we cut out. It's called excision of endometriosis. And then we send that specimen to a pathologist. They say, yes, under the microscope, that's endometrial type tissue. And that's how you get your diagnosis. Plus that's the treatment. Number five, what does treatment look like? Is it all medications or is there a special type of surgery that can take place? to help control endometriosis. So the treatment of endometriosis is primarily surgical, meaning you actually have to go in and remove the disease. That being said, medications can really help with symptoms. So if someone's having really painful periods, heavy periods, endometriosis can also cause like irregular bleeding and heavy period bleeding. Um, medications like hormonal birth control, you know, pills, the ring, uh, the patch, depo, an IUD, uh, the next one on, um, all of those can help lighten periods and decrease endometriosis symptoms of pain and inflammation. It doesn't make the endometriosis go away. So it's just for symptom relief. It's not for actually removing the disease, but can help a lot. Number six, and I anticipate this is a loaded question. Dr. Tang, what is something that the media, that people, that the general public gets wrong about endometriosis? You might have 10 things. Answer this any way you want. There are a lot of myths about endometriosis. Uh, number one, just leading into the diagnosis of endometriosis, a lot of people get told that super painful periods are normal, that everyone just has that and you have to deal with it. That's totally not true. That's what leads to a lot of delays in diagnosis, by the way. So if you're hearing that, please don't listen, you know, get a second opinion if it's a doctor telling you that. There's also a lot of myths about, you know, old fashioned ways of thinking of endometriosis, like that hysterectomies you know, treat endometriosis, that's also not true. Um, people used to think that endometriosis came from the actual uterus, so that taking the uterus out would treat endometriosis. Again, that's false. So if someone's walking down the street right now and they're having this thought, you know, maybe I have endometriosis, what should they do? A lot of times if someone is young, um, doctors may be reluctant to, you know, take someone for surgery if they are a teenager. Um, but a lot of us who are endometriosis specialists, you know, do say, please, you know, if you're having pain and you're not getting answers, you know, think about endometriosis and consider a laparoscopy so you can get an earlier diagnosis. Dr. Tang, this is why you're you. Thank you so much for clearing up this mysterious diagnosis that plagues millions of people. We definitely need more awareness and we're honored that you are here on Dr. Saying Stuff, helping to empower people. And we really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. We know this takes some time. We really appreciate you contributing to our show and contributing to public health in a very positive way. Also, we recommend that everyone out there goes and checks out Dr. Tang's social media, her Instagram, because aside from being brilliant, she's also kind of hilarious. Like her videos are a jam. And make sure that you hit that subscribe button, that like button, all the buttons that are around our channel and comment below if you have any questions, concerns, or personal stories about endometriosis. We are doctors saying stuff, we'll be saying stuff as long as you keep tuning in. Tell us the stuff to say and we'll keep saying the stuff. Jamie, say something else. We really appreciate you being here. Thanks for joining Doctors Saying Stuff where we not only say stuff, but we speak health. I think we literally lost a subscriber for saying stuff too much.